Hey everybody! Today's video is about note values and rest. And when I say note values, I mean the length of notes. So one note may sound longer or shorter than the others, that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's dive in. I hope you can see my PDF. Let me play our first example, Zinger Bells. Okay, so here we see a bunch of notes and they are in different shapes and different types. And that's what I want to talk about basically. Okay, so in my previous video, I have said that this is a quarter note, right? When you see a note head and the stem, and that's all you see, that's a quarter note. And I have also said that when you have a time signature of 4-4, four, four, you can fit four quarter notes into a bar. But instead of four quarter notes, over here in the first bar, you have only two of them, right? One quarter note, two quarter notes, followed by a half note okay so half note is different from quarter note and you can tell that by the look if the note head is empty that's a half note and i have written a half note over here see you can see that this occupies the same amount of time as two quarter notes so a half note can be divided into two quarter notes by the way when you put two half notes together now they amount to something that is larger than them, and that is a whole note. Okay, so we have spoken about three kinds of notes already. A quarter note, a half note, and a whole note. So you have whole note, which you divide into two half notes, and you take a half note, you divide that into two quarter notes. So you have that in the first bar and the second. In the third bar, however, you see something new. So you have two quarter notes followed by a something else okay so for that i have a new slide here we see something that is like a quarter note right but it's accompanied by a tiny dot and this is called a dotted quarter note over here okay so i have written a dotted quarter note and as you can see this dotted quarter note is longer than a quarter note right now the question is how much longer okay so what this dot does is it adds to the note half of its original length. So what that means is, let's say this quarter note lasts one second. If you add a dot to it, this dotted quarter note will last one and a half seconds, 1.5 seconds. Yeah, so this dot is half the length of this thing. And put together, you have 1.5 of its original value. Okay, so that's what it is. So you have a dotted quarter note followed by something else. Okay, so this is an eighth note, an eighth note, and it's written in this fashion. You write an eighth note with a note head and a stem and a flag when you have only one of them. However, when you have two or more eighth notes consecutively, you can use a beam. You can connect them with a beam, okay? But over here, you don't have any more than one, so you have to use a flag. That's what's happening. So coming back to the combination business, we are having a combination of a dotted quarter note and an eighth note. And you can see that combination over here too. The amount of time consumed by this combination is the same as the amount of time consumed by two quarter notes. Yeah, so in the space that you could have two quarter notes, you can also have one dotted quarter note and an eighth note. Now I wanted to speak about rests. Okay, here's a half rest. I have written a half rest over here. Okay, we have learned about half note, right? How many half notes can you have in a bar? Two, that's why we call them half notes. Each of them is just half the length of a bar. So half rest is the same thing. A half rest is as long as a half note. So it's simple as that, although we don't hear it because it's a rest. And here is a quarter rest. A quarter rest is as long as a quarter note. So instead of having four quarter notes, we are having two quarter notes only and two quarter rest. Moving on, our next example is Minuet in G by Petzold. Okay, 
Okay, so what's new here? Time signature is different. It's 3-4. But we still call all the notes by the same name. It just doesn't matter. So, for example, the first note is still a quarter note. Which is, by the way, a funny thing. Because, you know, in 3-4, you can only have three notes in a bar. So, why are we calling them quarter? Um, but it's okay, it doesn't matter, we just do. So this is a quarter note, and this is a series of eighth notes. I have said that you can write eighth notes with a beam, as long as you have two or more of them. So here you have four eighth notes beamed together. And if you look at the bass part, the left hand part, it begins with a half note, playing this chord, then the quarter note, then it goes up to the next note, which is a dotted half note. So I have written a dotted half note here. And yeah, as you can see, a dotted half note is longer than a half note. How much longer? By 50%. Okay, so this half note lasts two seconds, let's say. Now, this Mr. Dot is bringing half of the original value to add to the note. So this two seconds is joined by one second. Now put together three seconds. Next example is Swan Theme by Tchaikovsky. One theme. Time signature is 4-4. Four, four. And we don't see any new notes or we don't see any new combination of the notes. So here is our first note, right? Here is our eighth note. A dotted quarter note followed by an eighth note. This, by the way, combination occupies the same length as two quarter notes would. Now you have a bunch of this combination. Da, 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 da. Dun 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 half note dun 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 by the way here is something that's called a tie but we don't worry about this in this lesson now this is a dotted half note which is the same thing as three quarter notes because a half note is two quarter notes and the dot brings half of its original length. Now, next example is Eine kleine Nachtmusik by Mozart. Second line. Third line. Fourth line. Here, what's new? Eighth rest, that's what's new. So I have written an eighth rest over here. Okay, you understand what eighth notes are, right? An eighth note is half as long as a quarter note. So two eighth notes are the same thing as one quarter note in terms of duration. And the same goes for two eighth rests. Two eighth rests are the same thing as a quarter note or a quarter rest. Then here is something new. These are 16th notes, and you can tell that by the presence of the double beam. Okay, I have said you can use a beam to write two or more eighth notes, right? And you can also use a double beam to connect two or more 16th notes together, such as what you see over here. So here are four 16th notes that I put over here. This occupies the same amount of time a quarter note does, or two eighth notes does. They are all the same amount of time, let's say one second. Okay, so one second can be played by a quarter note or two eighth notes or four sixteenth notes. Alright, we call them sixteenth notes because we can put sixteen of them into a bar given the time signature of four four. Okay, next example is Little Fugue in G minor by J.S. Bach. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay, so I picked this because of this. You see, it's a new combination of the notes we already know. So here is my uh, reproduction of it. It's a combination of an eighth note and two sixteenth notes. We can tell that this is an eighth note because there is a beam, there is a single beam here. And we can tell that these are sixteenth notes because of this double beam. It's a double beam, right? That's how you tell. It's simple as that. And we have understood that two eighth notes equal the duration of one uh, quarter note, right? And over here, instead of two eighth notes, we have one eighth note and two sixteenth notes. Now, our last example is Caprice number 24 by Paganini. In this example, we have a repeat sign at the end of the first line. So the first line will be repeated. Okay, I'll try to uh, guide you also. Once more. Now the second line. Third line. Yeah, okay. In this example, the time signature is 2-4. But you guessed that. We call all the notes by the same name as long as they look the same. Okay, so at the beginning, we do see a new combination, right? Which I reproduced over here. So this is a combination of an eighth note followed by a sixteenth rest followed by a sixteenth note. So eighth note and sixteenth note, we already understand that. There's a single beam and there's a double beam at the end. This is how you tell, oh, it's the eighth note at the beginning and 16th note at the end. Yeah, but the rest is also similar to what we already know. So we know what an eighth rest looks like, right? It looks like this. It, it's kind of like, I don't know, small letter Y or something. 16th rest is similar, but you have an extra thing uh, over here. That's what a 16th rest is. And so when you have this particular combination, it has this dun da 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 this kind of a sound. That's um, that's how it goes, right? So I guess we covered everything for today. Let's do a quick recap. Okay, so at first we have noted quarter notes, half notes, and a whole note. Then we looked at a combination of a dotted quarter note and an eighth note. A dotted quarter note is one and a half times as long as a quarter note. And we have understood what eighth notes are. Eighth notes are basically half of quarter notes. So in the space of a quarter note, you can have two eighth notes. Eighth notes can be written with a beam if you have two or more of them, or can be written with a flag if you only have one of them. Then we spoke about the rest. A half rest is as long as a half note. Then here's a quarter rest, a quarter rest. Then we looked at another example, minuet in G, which is in 3-4. No matter what the time signature is, we call the notes by the same name. So we have a quarter note at first, and then you have four eighth notes that follow. And then in the left-hand part, you have a half note, and you also have a dotted half note, which is one and a half times as long as a half note. Then we have looked at Swan Theme by Tchaikovsky, uh, particularly, this uh, combination of a dotted quarter note and an eighth note is prominent in this excerpt. Next, we listen to Eine kleine Nachtmusik by Mozart. Well, not really, but a, a part of this <laughs> magnificent composition. And we have noted how an eighth rest looks like. Looks like this, right? Then, we have noted how the sixteenth notes look like. And we have understood that Four sixteenth notes are the same thing as one quarter note in terms of duration. Then we looked at Little Fugue in G minor by J.S. Bach. And we have noted this particular combination where there is an eighth note 
followed by two sixteenth notes. And if we can tell that the former is an eighth note because of a single beam, and we can tell that the latter two are sixteenth notes because of the double beam. Then finally, we listen to Caprice number no. 24 by Paganini. And we have noted this new combination where you have an eighth note at first, and then you have a sixteenth rest, and then a sixteenth note. Dun, da, 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 if you found it useful, I would appreciate very much if you click the like button there and if you subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Have a nice one wherever you are. Let's get the most out of this lockdown life. Bye.